patient, the patient is alert and comfortable and ambulating independently without any access to the device. All right. Now, would you be able to walk there? The patient demonstrated a biphasic, bipedal, normal gait. All right. There is no lurching on the shoulder to one side or another. Okay. In hip, all right. What kind of gait would you be able to expect? Would you be expecting if there's any pathology? Just mention. Short limb gait. Okay. What is short limb gait? How do you put it in five words? The definition of a short limb gait. Oh, sorry, not short. The antalgic gait is a five words. Short limb gait is just three words. Dropping of shoulders. Okay, so triple S, shoulder set on the same side. Okay, all right. So short limb gait means shoulder set on the same side, triple S. Shoulder set on the same side, short limb gait. All right, now, antalgic gait. What are the five words? Reduced stance phase. Okay. Short single leg stance phase. Short when you are single leg, then that single leg is short stance phase. Short single leg stance phase. Okay? So anthology is short single leg stance phase. And then uh, short limb gate is a shoulder set on the same side. Okay, alright. So you check the gate, everything normal. Then after that, you ask the patient to lie down. Well, let's say the pathology is on the right side. Only now, you're going to ask, you're going to do the closer inspection. And how do you do a closer inspection? By using a blanket. However, only then you flip, flip like this. Then you check. Okay? Alright. So, what do you mention? Again, the same thing. What are the four apps? Sinus. Okay. Wasting probably a bit difficult. There's not much of a wasting here because wasting is more of the lower limb. Probably you can inspect when the patient was uh, standing during general inspection. Any wasting of the quadriceps muscle, any wasting of the calf muscle, and so on. All right. Uh, deformity. If there's any obvious deformity, then you can mention attitude and alignment. Probably you have to mention when the patient was standing just now. Was it vulgar, varium, externally rotated more and all that. Okay. Then after that, you check for you feel. Okay. Feel for what are the three things. Tenderness and effusion, but no effusion in the hip. Lah. Ah, no effusion in the hip. Okay, so you're going to press. Press usually to come to a bony landmark, you need to come from the soft spot first. Which means, in order to palpate the ASIS, you need to come from the soft inguinal ligament. Understand? You don't go from the iliac crest down to the ASIS, but rather you go from the pubic symphysis. Slowly, the first bony point that you touch is your ASIS. Then palpate along the iliac crest, go towards posteriorly, then after that come down to your GT. Palpate, no bony tenderness, no joint line tenderness. Okay? Alright. Now after that you feel for the temperature. Okay? So look done, general, general look done, closer look done, feel done, now move. Okay? Move. So you can ask the patient to how do you flex your feet? Okay, but this one, the hip flexion is only about 45 degrees. Yeah, like that. So when you check for hip flexion, it's like this. Alright, so hip flexion is usually about 110 degrees. Uh, this is hip flexion. Okay, ascension will hardly jack unless you ask the patient to lie prone and then lift up. Ascension hardly jack this. Flexion, uh, hip flexion. Alright, and then after that, abduction, abduction. Uh, see how I do? First, I square the pelvis first. ASIS and ASIS. One line, ASS, ASS, one line. This line has got to be perpendicular to the side of the bed. 90-90. Understand? It cannot be like that. Like that already, this angle is wrong already. This angle is wrong already. It has got to be 90-90. Okay? ASIS, I pop it. ASIS, I pop it. I imaginary one line. ASIS connect to another ASIS. Like this. This line and this edge of the bed should be 90. Understand? Only then you can check. Okay? Alright. So now I'm going to check the hip abduction. How I check? I operate the contralateral ASIS. I bring the hip up. Okay? This is the hip abduction of the right hip. This is 45 degrees. Understand? Okay? How do I check hip abduction of the right hip? What I do? Understand? You always have to feel here uh, to stabilize it. 
So keep a deduction about 30 degrees for the right. Okay, now of course you want to compare to the contralateral side. Very important. Now I would like to request for permission to examine the patient from the left side. Okay. Operate the contralateral one and after that do a hip abduction about 45 degrees. Okay. Then hip abduction about 30 degrees. Comparable both. Understand so far. Okay. So you check for hip flexion, abduction, abduction. Then you check for internal and external rotation. Okay, so how do you check? Hip flex to 90 degree, knee flex to 90 degree, then you turn. If I turn like this, is this internal or external rotation? Internal. Internal rotation at about 30 degree. Okay, then you do external rotation. This is about 45 degree. Well, let's say if the pathology is coming from the hip, what do you think? Is it the loss of internal rotation or loss of external rotation? They won't be able to do which one. It's a loss of internal rotation. Okay. Now yesterday I was with one of your batchmates, I think your colleague attached to auto clinic new case. And then after that we saw one hip OA, very, very nice case. That is an absolute loss of internal rotation. So initially the patient tell me the history is like you got pain here, you got pain at the back and all that. I was like, oh it's coming from spine, and then the pain somehow come down all the way here. I was like, oh my god. Like I need to check three systems, knee, hip, and uh, spine, all right? But I feel that it's more coming from the hip at that time, I don't know, just instinct. But once I do this range of motion, I know already it's definitely the hip. Because yesterday when I do this, I want to do internal rotation, I cannot do at all. It's all stuck like that. Loss of internal rotation. But when I do external rotation, still can, but reduce. Huh? So no internal rotation or lack of internal rotation. Okay, that's pointing towards hip pathology. So, movement done. So, how do you check for hip flexion, fixed flexion deformity, hip contracture? What can you do? Thomas. Thomas test. Okay, alright. Now, it's not easy to understand, alright, but I'll explain to you and make sure you understand today, alright? So, first, I will put my hand down underneath the, underneath the lumbar, alright? Then, after that, now let's say if I want to check the left hip, ah, again, ah, I want to check the left hip whether there's any FFD or not, I flex the right hip. I flex all the way. Bend your knee, bend your hip all the way. Ask you to hold. Okay, both hands hold this one. Ah, okay. And then after that, I want to look for the angle between this and the bed. If the patient has got an FFD, the patient will be like this, slightly. So that means that the patient has got a FFD of the left or the right hip of 15 degree. Left. left hip. Okay, left hip. Now I'm checking the left side. I ask the patient to bend the contract like that. Okay, alright. So, again, uh, now I'm checking the right hip, whether there's any FFD or not. I put this, and then I ask the patient to bend the hip, the knee, until the lumbar spine is, the lordosis is obliterated, it's all flat. Okay, then after that, I look at here, whether there's any more space or not. Okay? If there is space, that means that the patient has a hip FFD. Okay, understand so far, this common step. But let's say, let's say, if this patient, the right knee, has got a FFD. So let's say this patient to begin with cannot even put fat because this one, the knee got problem. FFD. So how do you check? Move the patient down. Yes, correct. Alright. So now the knee got an FFD. It won't be accurate for you to do a Thomas test. What you do, you ask the patient to go all the way down. Okay, can you come down? Your knee at this level. <coughs> and just go back. Ah, like that. So you take away the FFD of the knee already. Now, understand. So now you lie down. Okay? Like this. And then after that, the FFD of the knee is right side. I want to check the right hip FFD. Okay? Now, can you please bend your left knee all the way and hold it? Hold it some. So now I want to see if there is really true FFD of the right hip, there should be some angle between the bed and the thigh here. Okay, understand so far? Digest, huh? Okay, Thomas test, that's how you do. You bend the contralateral. But when the patient has got an FFD of the knee, you want to take away the FFD of the knee. You bring it down. This is called a modified Thomas test. Yes. 
this this one ah, this angle. For example, if the patient got FFD like this already, so this one and this angle, this and this angle, so about fifteen or twenty degrees. So if they said, how do you want to really quantify it? You use a goniometer. You, you have seen a goniometer before that can slide one. Right? Okay, then they will ask you, where do you put that center point of your goniometer? At your GT area. At your GT. That set, this is your GT, this is the center point, and then this is horizontal, this is the thing that you can slide. Okay, alright. Now, another question is that, if the patient has got external rotation deformity, sometimes the patient can have external rotation deformity. You need to be very careful with that kind of case, because even though you do a Thomas test with it, for example, I'm checking the left hip, ah. can you bend this one? But patient is externally rotated like that, the hip. So it looks as if it is lying on the bed. But when you correct it to neutral, there's an angle. Rate. Okay, so in an externally rotated hip, you need to correct it to neutral first before you really determine the angle. These are more of a modified, more detailed version of the digital, a little bit of tips and tricks. Because sometimes you may not get, you know, a, a just a very normal neutral hip and get an external. Okay, so after that you need to check the limb length. Okay, so what is apparent limb length? What where do you check? Side sternum to medial medullus. Okay, side by sternum to medial medullus. Where else besides side by sternum? Anything anywhere else you can use as a landmark? Umbilicus. Okay, so if the apparent limb length are different, all right, what could be the causes? Mm. Hip dislocation. Yeah. All this uh, joint contracture. Okay. Joint. Hip contracture, knee contracture, uh yeah, hip contracture and knee contracture basically. If it contracts like that, although the limb length is still the same, but it looks as if the apparent limb length is different. Knee and hip contracture. Okay? So a 30 de uh, uh 10 degree adduction deformity, 10 degree adduction deformity will give rise to about 3 cm limb length disturbance. 10 degree adduction means that like that. So the patient is walk like that. 10 degree adduction deformity. When you measure the apparent limb length, it will give you 3 cm difference. Not, not, not important on that one. Okay, so how do we measure? Do we measure like this using the inch or the centimeter? Inch. Inch, okay. Only then after that you flip to a centimeter. Now how many times should you measure? Is it one time enough? Three times. You take the average. Okay, alright. But usually I think in exam, you try to measure and then when you want to measure the second time, they know you know what you are doing already and then they will say, okay, just proceed. Like that. Okay, alright. So, apparent limb length. Uh, so usually what we do is that we will use a marker pen. Uh, a marker pen or a pen, alright, to mark first. Because medium mellowness is so big, uh, where you want to measure. Now you come to here. During the second time, you probably go to here. Then it's all different already. So you use a pen and mark first. Use a pen and mark, then after that you measure. From the umbilical all the way, using the inch, then after that, see. Okay, during the second time, again, also the same. Use an inch, then after that, you see. Alright, that's apparent limb length. So I already told you, that's how you measure apparent limb length and the causes for apparent limb length difference. is hip contracture and knee contracture. Okay, alright. Now, true limb length, how do you measure true limb length? ASIS. ASIS to medium medullus. Okay, ASIS to medium medullus. Again, you need to mark your ASIS, then the same point at the medium medullus. So again, three times. Uh, then you take the average. Okay, alright. So let's say this patient has got a limb length discrepancy over the right side. How do you want to determine whether it is coming from the femur or the tibia? What test do you do? Galeazi test. So Galeazi test, how do you do Galeazi test? Knee flex 90. Mm -hmm. And ankle has got to be the same. Alright. So knee flex and the ankle has got to be the same. Alright. So now you look at the tibia tuberosity from the side. Look at the tibia tuberosity. If now because the pathology is this side, okay? So you always compare the abnormal to the normal. If this is going down a little bit more, 
the this is going down a little bit more. It's coming from the femur. If the tibia is tibia tuberosity is lower, it's coming from the femur. The short limb is coming from the femur. It's always the opposite. If the femur looks shorter, the this one is coming from the tibia. Understand? This is a projection of the femur. Projection of the femur. The femur stop here, right? The femur stop here. Okay. So if this one is shorter here, okay, like lower. The pathology is coming from the tibia. It's always the opposite. When you look at the tibia tuberosity, if it's different, then it's coming from the femur. Okay? Okay, now, if you know that already, and um, you know that it's coming from the femur, then you want to know whether it is supra trochanteric or infra trochanteric. Supra trochanteric means that the shortening is coming from here. Infra trochanteric means that the shortening is coming from here. Okay, if for example you got a neck of femur fracture or dislocation of the hip, all this will be supra trochanteric. Right? Alright, if you got a fracture here and then after that there is a mal union uh, or non union, then this will cause a infra trochanteric shortening. Alright, so how do you determine that? Brian's triangle. Okay, alright, so Brian's triangle, you take the ASIS, okay. And then after that, you palpate the GP. When you palpate the GP, you want to determine, you feel really the bony prominence, then you rotate. Rotate to feel it. Huh? Okay, alright. So this is the GP, this is the ASIS. And after that, you draw one line vertically down to the bed. And then this is the distance that you want. Understand, huh? this is Brian's triangle. Okay, so ASIS, one line down. And after that, this is your GP. Connect your GT to here. Alright. So this one. And then the distance that you want to see is from here to here. The distance that you want to see. Okay, alright. So naturally, probably this will be shorter. A lot of time is uh, super compensatory. Huh? A lot of time. Huh? Could be because of a hip OA, ABM of the hip, uh, adult hip dysplasia, all these can contribute to your supra compensatory limb length discrepancy. Okay? So that's how you do the Brian triangle to tell you the shortening is coming from supra compensatory. Now, what are the other two lines that you know of that can tell you the limb length discrepancy? Have you heard of Nelaton's line and Shoemaker's line? No one. Huh? Nelaton's line and Shoemaker line. Okay, alright. So, Nalaton line is whereby you draw a line, imaginary line, from the ASIS, okay, to the ischial tuberosity. Ischial tuberosity is where you sit, lah. Ah, ischial tuberosity. And then after that, this line, like this, the GT of the femur should lie below it. Understand? You can Google and see the, the image. I also very difficult for me to draw. Ah, Nalaton line. All right. So, looking from the lateral view, okay. ASIS to the ischial tuberosity and the GT of the femur should be below that line. If the GT of the femur goes above that line, that means that there is a shortening at the superpanatory region. Okay, that is Nalaton's line. Okay? Now, shoemaker line. Shoemaker line. You draw a line from the GT to the ASIS. You see, eh? I draw for you. This one easier to draw. This is your body, this is your umbilicus. Alright? So, this is your another femur here, alright? So, from GT to the ASIS, you draw one line. From the GT to the ASIS, you draw another line. This line should intersect above the umbilicus. Okay? Alright? Now, if it intersect below the umbilicus, okay? Which means that the shortening, that is of shortening, and then after that, which is a shortening, it depends on where it intersect. For example, if this hip is shorter, like here, so GT to ASIS and it will cross here. Understand? So, by drawing a shoemaker line, you know that there is shortening. And you know that the shortening is coming from the right side because it intersects on the left side. Okay? So, besides Brian triangle, you can do Nalaton's line, you can do Shoemaker's line. Okay. 
So I think that's all about heat. Anything else I miss? Oh yeah, one thing also very important, it's good to know, it's good to do also, it's called a skin field test. Skin field test, okay? Skin field test is more or less like a straight leg raising test. You ask the patient to raise the leg, okay? Straighten it up, okay? Maintain, and you press it down. Like you want to do the L2, you want to check the mass uh, power of L2, alright? You press it down. The patient complain of pain, alright? Now, if the pain is coming anteriorly, the patient says, oh, I got a pain here when you do that test. It's from the hip intraarticularity. If the pain is coming from the back, it's from the spine. Okay, alright, sting field test. So that's how yesterday I saw a case. I told you the history is very ambiguous. I do sting field test, I do range of motion of the hip without looking at the x-ray, I know that it's a hip pathology. Loss of internal rotation with the sting field test patient complaint of pain at the anterior region. Okay. Okay, yeah, done already. Okay.